Alright, so this is going to be the first part in us making a uh, bioactive exoterra for our green tree python who's off inside the little bin uh, to the right of the big exoterra with the styrofoam in it. Now I have not uh, silicone the styrofoam down. We just cut it to make sure it would still fit. And I have a little test piece of foam that I'm about to work with on texturizing before I actually move to what's inside the big exoterra. Uh, but I guess real quick, I can show you who we are putting in here. This is a female Aru type. There she is. But yeah, this is a uh, 36 tall by 18 deep by 36 wide. That's going to be plenty, plenty big enough for her. And there's also going to be an, a male that we are getting next week that I'll be going in uh, with her once it's all finished and they get done with quarantine and so on and so forth. But this is just a temporary enclosure. She's been in it for the last two-ish weeks. But yeah, I'm gonna do this test piece and we'll see how it looks. Alright, so we got the drill, we got the bit. We are going to put it on the drill. Then here is my scrap piece. Let me point this down so you at least kind of see it. There we go. We're going to see how this looks. This is going to make a mess on the carpet, but we're redoing the floors anyway. So, I don't suppose it matters. I'm going to do it on this side. Yeah, I think that will carve pretty good. I guess I'm just going to go all in. Might need to use my foot to hold it down a little bit. I think we might need a bigger Whew, that's gonna make a mess. But it looks like it will work. Alright. Well I'm gonna do this off camera and uh, show you all when I'm finished. <coughs> all right. So here it is. The textured board. Don't know if this camera's picking up that. Here it is, as far as I can. This is just a test piece. I'm not gonna actually be using this one. Just wanted to see if I could match uh, the rocky-ish texture, and we're going to go over this with a heat gun later, and then we'll move on to the big one. Alright, I decided to show you we're going to be using two different methods inside this build. So on one piece, of, on one side of this foam, I took a, uh, a butter knife and just ran along the edges to get it that nice rocky looking texture. And then on this side, this is that drill bit that I used on the previous piece of foam that I showed you. I didn't really go too much in detail with this one. I just kind of did it everywhere and whatever. Uh, but this should look a lot better once it's uh, uh, once we get the heat gun and go over it with the heat gun. Same for this side. I'm going over this side with the heat gun as well. And then I guess we're going to take those panels out. And try it on that but yeah this is the butter knife and then this is that drill bit that I was using all right so it's been a few days I didn't uh, video this last process because it was kind of a long drawn-out thing we had to leave home and I didn't want to keep on going back and forth but this is a cage after like I showed into the previous clip after we used the tool to score the back I made this really cool uh, kind of rocky 
looking exterior. And we also already painted it. We used a mix of a white tintable dry lock and some uh, concrete pigments. Uh, I believe that is the charcoal color. But yeah, so far so good. I will keep on updating you as we move along. All right, here's us filming in the main branch. Uh, it was a bit of a hard process. We had never filmed anything like this before, so we used wire to hold it up. Then here's the second branch. Uh, we also used two screws to put that branch on to make it not move. And then here is everything cut, and we also added in a shelf. And we grouted in that shelf first. And here's everything painted over with dry lock and that concrete pigment. Looks really good right now. And then here's the highlight, the red pigment that we were said we were going to use previous clip. This is it. This is very, very nice. I really like the look that this came out with. And then here is the Eco Earth that we used with silicone to hide all the black dry lock and foam. All right, this stuff is called Lika, and right now we have it in small buckets of water to get all the dirt and debris off of it and allow them to soak up some water for some extra humidity when put into the enclosure. Yeah, they'll soak in here for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Then we'll also drain all the water out. Here is me putting it inside of the enclosure. This is sped up because it was a pretty long segment of me going back and forth draining it as I went. But yeah, this is used in all kinds of bioactive setups. Again, as a drainage layer, it allows uh, the dirt to actually not be sitting in water. Whenever you add this, this allows that dirt to dry while the water seeps below into the leka and gets uh, absorbed into the clay or uh, used for humidity down at the bottom of the tank. This is a, uh, this isn't a brand and name version of Lika. This is just some I got from the hardware store. Works just as good. And I only needed one bag of it, which costs like around $10 for this. Uh, this is a pretty big Exoterra, so I'm surprised that went that far. All right, and then here is a photo of the drainage barrier that we used. All right, here it is with the dirt inside of the enclosure and a few plants, a few old logs that I had lying around. All right, this is one final look of the enclosure before the animals are actually put into it. Some nice plants on the bottoms, a few logs. All right, and here is the male going in. This is a green tree python. He is in a roux locale. Uh, this is a very high white individual. I love his lime green colors. Very pretty snakes. And then the female we will be introducing in just a moment. Look at him perched up there. Here's the female. She is also in a roux. She's a little bit bigger than he is. These are such pretty snakes. But green tree pythons are found in the New Guinea, Eastern Indonesia, and the Northeast Cape York Peninsula of Australia. Uh, these snakes range up to 5 feet or 1.5 meters in length. Alright, and also, unlike most green tree pythons, where you'll see red and yellow neonates, aroos only produce yellow neonates. So if you ever see a aroo that is a red neonate, uh, it probably has aroo inside the genetics, but it is not pure aroo. It's probably a cross with a biak or a sarong to get them high blue babies that are sought after for being the red neos. But there's a close-up of the male. And you can see the female right there. And then here is a final look at the enclosure. There's still updates we'll probably be doing. I am currently in the process of building a new water bowl for it. But there is a nice bromeliad inside the tree. 
very pretty. The uh, golden Porthos up on that ledge. There's the male Aru, very pretty, getting it adjusted to the news closure. And then here is another look at the female. Uh, I love her blue on her face, she's such a pretty snake. And then there's an, our last bromeliad. I believe we did a pretty good job for this being our first go at the bioactive setup. And I hope you all enjoyed the video.